afternoon and welcome to a very special lunchtime off the ball. We're here because it is, of course, day one of Cheltenham 2018. And to all you racing fans out there, a very happy Christmas. To all you non-racing fans out there, well, you're going to want to stick with us because we've got our racing expert, John Duggan, with us uh, live from Cheltenham. We're going to get to him in just a moment. But if you want to get any questions in for John, you can tweet us at Off The Ball or you can comment on the stream if you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube. But as I say, let's head straight over to John. We're going to be with you uh, until about one o'clock. Good afternoon, John. John, how are things there? Oh, and it's Christmas Day and the presents have been unwrapped and we're just so excited here about Cheltenham 2018 and luckily it's a dry day. We've had so much rain here over the last 10 days and we're just buzzing about the fact that there'll be 60,000 people here today. There'll be huge anticipation of winners, of great stories being created and probably a few surprises, which always happens on Cheltenham any day, really, either the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday or Friday. So... The big one is the champion hurdle. We can't wait. And, and um, this is like no other race meeting, now, no other race meeting in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Is it going to be further affected, do you reckon, by the weather? Is the forecast good? Is it going to turn into a complete mud fest by the end of the week or is, is the rain finished? No, the rain's not finished. I think there's more rain forecast tomorrow evening and on Thursday. But I think the course drains very well. They've got very good facilities here. And I don't think the ground will deteriorate into a situation where we could have, as you see in Ireland at Christmas, sometimes uh, races being called off or anything like that. So there's no danger to the festival being held. Uh, um, although the conditions are going to be testing. It'll be heavy ground. But sure, it's a bit of fun. It's something different. Well, you know, let, let's see how they all cope with it. Yeah, absolutely. We'll get into kind of the race by race breakdown in just a moment and how that weather will affect things. But I just want to get your take, first of all, on Cheltenham as a whole. You've been there, as you mentioned, on OTB AM this morning for 17 consecutive years, I think, at this stage. And uh, I think it was Eamon Sweeney writing on Sunday that it's a very unique crowd at Cheltenham because ultimately you've got some of the most knowledgeable people about the sport. And essentially the entire crowd there are incredibly knowledgeable about this sport, which you don't exactly see at the upper echelons of other sports exactly, do you? No, you don't see it in other racing festivals. I mean, Galway, for example, I find Owen is very much a social festival as opposed to a racing festival. And Punch of Town would be a bit more uh, knowledgeable and purist. But um, it, it, it just has so many aficionados coming from Ireland, probably a third of the crowd are Irish. But it's like the Munster Hurling final. Or it's like Croke Park and all Ireland final day. When you go to those games or you go to a Six Nations game like Twickenham this weekend, you're just going to feel it in the air. It's very difficult to actually tan tangibly describe what it feels like, but you just know it. As a sports fan, you know what it's like. If you go to a Republic of Ireland game, a really big World Cup qualifier, you know what that feeling is like when you're at a major sporting event. Uh, I've been at Ryder Cups, Open Championships, the Olympic Games. You just have that feeling. It just You just know it's bigger. Mm. And it is bigger because if you go to Leopardstown at Christmas, there's fifteen to 20,000 people there. And that's a sizable crowd, but you still have room to move around. Here, you know, it's pretty busy. It's pretty busy. You need to get your vantage point and your position early. But it's unlike any other um, race meeting that I've ever experienced. And you always get the first uh, race, the 130 Supreme Novices Hurdle. Massive roar goes up and the tapes go up. And I, I think what makes Cheltenham so special, Owen, is not just the quality of the racing and the relentless nature of the fact that there's 28 races over four days. Once it starts, it doesn't stop. It's it's also the um, Coliseum that it's enveloped in. The fact that the horses come down the hill, you see them, they come towards you, and then when you get to the end of the uh, hill, then they come up towards you uh, in, terms of, in terms of the winning post. So yeah. I think that's what makes it such a special thing for a viewer. Yeah, 45 minutes until, as you say, the Supreme Novices Hurdle gets underway and we hear that first Cheltenham roar. Uh, what are we noticing in terms of the markets this morning, John? Has there been any major movement? Uh, yeah, the Ruby Walsh, Willie Mullins trained footpad in the second race, the Oracle Chase. He's been the one probably attracting the most money from 11 to 10, even money owing into odds on now, 10 to 11 in the betting footpad. Really good jumper, doesn't put a foot wrong, would like the ground. Also money for Faheen in right. the champion hurdle, less than half three. Bouverdere is the odds on favour, but there is money for Faheen into 11 to 2 now, which is very interesting, Faheen. Okay. Um, of course, this was a former champion hurdle of three years ago, winner. Um, I was out off the track for nearly two years, reappeared very well at Punchestown a few months ago, but then disappointed twice. Disappointed at Christmas, almost like r r raced abnormally. And then um, was really kind of flat behind Super Sunday in, in the last time his appearance at Leopardstown. And so uh, Faheen's attracted a bit of money. I was at a preview with Derek O'Connor, the really top point-to-point -to -point amateur jockey about a half an hour ago. And he said Faheen looked fantastic this morning on the gallops. He galloped to a Willie's horses. He was just a curious Derek was. And he said Faheen galloped fantastically well and I think there's a little bit of money for it what Willie Mullins has done he's put cheek pieces kind of like you know just to make the horse concentrate a bit more and maybe buzz him up a bit and he's 10 years of age a horse at 10 years of age has not won a champion hurdle since 
1980, see Pigeon. So he does have to work against age. The fact that he might have lost a bit of his fizz, a bit of his zip in terms of his speed to beat Bouvard there. But he has attracted a bit of money, Fahin. In terms of the other races, get a bird, easy to back in the first race, out to 2-1. to one. The money in that race has come for Summerhill, Summerville Boy at 7-1 to one now from 8. Uh, Joseph O'Brien Horse, us and them, has been back from 50s to 33s in the first race. A little bit of money for Western Rider in the first race as well. Spoke there about footpad already. He's very, very solid in the second race, the Oracle Chase. In the third race, that's the Ultima Handicap Chase. A real slog now. They're going for horses that have heavy ground form. Yala Enki into 14 to 1, number 3 in the card. And then Cogri down at the bottom, number 17 in the card for Nigel Twiston Davis into 14 to 1. Uh, the champion hurdle, as I said, Fahin's where the money is. Hmm. My 10 to yours is now out of the race. Yeah. Um, veterinary advice from Nicky Henderson, the trainer. Although Nicky has confirmed that Altior will run in the champion chase tomorrow. Um, bit of money in terms of a drift in the mayor's hurdle for La Baja Roo, La Baja Roo, uh, Warren Great Trex's horse. She's gone from six out to seven it's not much money for her and then in the last two races Rath Vinden for Willie Mullins and his son Patrick in the four mile amateur chase money for him into favourite now 11 to 2 Rath Vinden um, and another one attracting support is Jewel at Dawn from 18 into 12 to 1 for Alex Hales Jewel at Dawn and in the final race Ted Walsh horse any second now in the colours J.B. McManus Mark Walsh in the saddle 11 to 2 from 6 to 1 now the clear favourite any second now De Plotting Chet is drifting in the batting for Gordon Elliott, but there is money for a couple of others. Mr. Whitaker from eights into 13 to twos, number 20 for Mick Channon. And Ibis Dura, a former festival winner, has in from 28s to 20s for Paul Nichols, being nibbled out in the betting. But any second now, Rats Vinden and Footpad are attracting money as well as Fahin. Right, very interesting. Fahin, the big one there, obviously. Uh, cheap are the, the blinkers on the horse, I think, for the first time, is it, John? Like, I, I think it's an experimental thing by the Mullins camp this morning. They said they're not quite sure what will actually happen once they put the blinkers on, but clearly somebody thinks that it's going to work. Well, they're not exactly blinkers. They're the kind of um, they're on the sides of the okay. horse. They're got like you know they're like a sheepskin noseband. Remember Red Rome used to wear them, and they're on the sides of the horse. So they're just to make him concentrate a little bit more um, at, at his job in hand. But uh, they're just trying something different. We just don't know. Nobody knows what's going to happen to Fahin. Yeah, and Bouvier there, we know that Bouvier there has won the champion hurdle and he's won every race this season, and he will handle the ground. That's why he's odds on. But if there's any horse to beat Bouverdere, the only horse you can beat him. And we I think we're just uh, really we're just breaking up with you a little bit there, John. Yeah. Uh, we're just uh, chatting about uh, the 3.30 there, of course, the feature race there, the champion hurdle. Uh, we might just uh, hop back a race while we re-establish uh, connection to John, and we'll go to the Arkle, because uh, with the Arkle, it's an interesting one. Footpad, the favourite, as John had outlined there, uh, moved in well into the odds on at this point. It's uh, the Mullins and Walsh horse. But last night, Cornelius Lysett of the BBC was on the show, and he had a tip of a different horse from what he had heard on the course. The big tip. Big tip on the race course, though, today for tomorrow is for the Arkle and is not for Footpad. Say it quietly because most people think Footpad's already mm -hmm. won, but it's for St. Calvados. Uh, and St. Calvados, uh, trained by Harry Whittington, very much an up and coming young trainer based uh, not too far away from the Lambourne Racing Centre. Uh, he's He's got some good horses. He's a young trainer, very much on the up. And this St. Calvados won a race at Warwick the other day when, you know, it was barely raceable, really, right. uh, but absolutely skipped through it. We may as well uh, stick with this one now, John. St. Calvados, what do you reckon? Yeah, I think St. Calvados has got a very good chance. Um, the only thing about St. Calvados is he, he wasn't a great hurdler. He wasn't a, like a, a top hurdler. Um, and normally the Arkle Chase is won by really good hurdlers. Um, you know, you've seen in previous years. So uh, Petit Michoir and, Fo and Footpad, I think, have it between them in terms of hurdle form. And whether that will translate into uh, a chase uh, has to be seen. But you can't knock the fact that St. Calvados has got great form in terms of his jumping and in terms of loving soft ground. Um, but I think Footpad was a better hurdler and that might just give the edge. Yeah, even when you look at Petit Mouchoir, I don't think St. Calvador has really faced anything of even that calibre yet. Would that be fair to say? It's certainly over fences anyway. Yeah, and Petit Mouchoir, I know Henry de Bramhead is happy with him, but he, he does lack experience. And I, I'm not so sure about his jumping, and I think he might be suited by better ground. Um, I think like the Oracle Chase is all about speed, and it's all about jumping and getting into a rhythm. And Footpad is one of the best jumpers we've seen the last few years, and I think that gives him a massive advantage of taking lengths out of his fences and then uh, getting, getting, getting a breather Ruby Walsh into him, a no better man at the top of the hill to be able to kick for home and win. 
Yeah, absolutely. Let's just have a look at uh, your tips, as we can see on screen here. So we've seen Somerville Boy, Each Way, Bet. Uh, as you mentioned, that's come in uh, a little bit this morning. Footpad, a banker of the day, as we've just been uh, discussing. Uh, Ramsey de Taye, the Each Way Bet. You might just talk to us about that one, John. That seems to be one of the lesser-known horses on your list of tips for this morning. Uh, well, it was a David Pipe trained horse. He's had the winner of the race uh, twice in the last, well, he's won the last two uh, renewals of this race with Umptons for two. So he's, he knows how to target a horse of the race. The horse is pretty straightforward. He jumps well. You have to jump well out of this heavy ground today. I think he'll get the trip. I think he showed some good form. He's a progressive horse. He's only a six-year-old. And I think he's um, definitely a horse that can go well for a long way and reach the frame. I would respect the other horses with heavy ground form in the race like Yala and Key and Cogri. Um, I'm not too keen on Kustar Civila. I think he's too short in the betting now. Single palm payment hasn't done it for me in terms of his form this season. So I think the David Pipe horse is a progressive horse. Sometimes you're looking for these young up-and-coming horses in this type of race. I think on the ground and his jumping says to me that he's got each way chance about 12 to 1. Yeah, just because we're tight on time, we might just uh, speed on to Jarrah's girl because you've mentioned most of the other tips there. Uh, give us the pitch for Jarrah's girl. Why should, we put a, why should we be putting our money each way on Jarrah's girl? Because at 8 to 15, I mean, unless you've got 150,000 euro, Owen, uh, that you're not telling us about, I mean, to win 80,000 on Apple's Jade, I mean, I just, I just think, what am I looking for? I mean, there's all the Benny de Dieu and the horse at La Baja Roi that's drifting in the betting. Jarrah's girl fell in the race last year. He does have good form. He was only two lengths behind Apple's Jade earlier this season. He's, uh, she was, uh, it's actually she, she's a very good novice. Uh, juvenile horse and I think that at 14 to 1 this morning 10 to 1 when I was tipping her I do think she's got a chance of reaching, reaching the first three I'm not saying she can beat Apple's Jade but if Apple's Jade flops or does not perform I think Jarrah's girl at 2 to 1 a place is not a bad bet Not bad indeed John, enjoy today enjoy Christmas a very happy Christmas to you I'm not sure what point uh, Christmas gets all in Cheltenham I suspect not at all it's four days of absolute joy so have a good time we'll talk to you again tomorrow morning on OTB AM which is live on all these channels from 7.45 AM uh, we're going to move on, as I say, to the champion hurdle. John's been giving his tips there. Boover there looks close to unbeatable at this point, and uh, there's no better man to get his take on Boover there than AP McCoy. He was on the Keith Andrews show last Thursday, and here's what he had to say about that horse. I'd say Boover there is bomb proof. If anything, you know, he looks better than he was last year. Um, it's hard to say because he hasn't really beaten him, but that's because he's been so impressive. He's a very good jumper. He goes in any ground. He's won over two and a half miles at entry, so he stays well. He's very adaptable in terms of how you ride him. He could make the run, he could drop in. Very solid horse. Faheen was an exceptional champion hurdler. You know, when he last won the Irish champion hurdle in 2015, I think it was, or 16, he was so impressive. What he didn't do in Leopardstown the last day was he wasn't able to get a horse like Super Sunday who beat him out of his comfort zone. And whether the zest is there that was there before, he's not anywhere close to the Faheen that we saw a few years ago. And he kind of, I'm not saying he needs to be, but he needs to be at a much higher level than he was in Leopardstown. He needs to improve dramatically. Willie Mullins is a genius, but it'll be his, it'll be his greatest training performance if he, if he gets him to win a, a champion order. Um, for me, but with your bumper. Boover there, there. It's going into half three in the champion hurdle, as AP said there. Our other tipster, who of course has been on with us over the last couple of days, is Johnny Ward, who's over in Cheltenham. Let's just bring you up on screen now his tips over the last couple of days. Uh, Moss back in the 450 with Lisa O'Neill on board looks to be someone that's been tipped quite a bit, actually, uh, over the last couple of hours. That's Johnny, who's tipping Moss back. Uh, he said he was fairly sweet on footpad in the article. And the plotting shed in the last one for Gordon Elliott, the plotting shed looks to be something that's uh, g garnering a good bit of interest as well. Uh, second favourite now at 7-1, to one according to the odds at the moment. That's Gordon Elliott and Davy Russell's uh, horse there. Any second now, the favourite at 11-2. to two. We might just bring you back up uh, Johnny's tips there again for just one second, if you can do that. Um, the Boucher then each way at 33 to 1 at half past 1 is your saver that is the most Johnny Ward tip I've ever heard if there's anything else that Johnny Ward had to say well we gave him a chance to rattle off his other tips this morning on OTB AM alright so Mossback is the main tip in terms of the weather anything else anything else you want to give us before you go uh, Mossback and uh, I would be fairly sweet on uh, footpad as well in the Arkle uh, I think he's a great chance and the plotting shed in the last race each way can go wrong each way for Gordon Elliott yeah, and finally, before we leave you, it's 5 to 1 now, we're 35 minutes away from the start of the Cheltenham Festival. The most important tipster of all is Kevin Kilban. Unfortunately, we couldn't reach him this afternoon, but he has 
sent through his tips to us. Uh, he's advised, some of us anyway, a double of Apple's Jade and Boover Dare. Not exactly sticking the neck out too much, but a double on that would turn around uh, a decent enough wedge of profit. Uh, Mengli each way and Apple's Jade as well as a potential other double. Uh, and then the other couple of tips that he says might be of interest to you at home is Mengli can each way, Moss back each way. There's another one there. So we've got some sort of parity between Kevin and Johnny there. And Apple's Jade to win could be a potential other bet. So overall, all there. If you're betting on Mengli Khan or Mossback, he's advising each way. If you're going for Apple's Jade, you're obviously going to go uh, and you're going to go for that one to win, as John said earlier. Unless you've got 150 grand stowed away somewhere, you're not going to bet on that one to win. That is it for this afternoon. Cheltenham, as I say, starts in around 34 minutes' time at this point. I can't wait. We all can't wait. It's Christmas. It really is. As I say, we'll be back tomorrow morning from 7.45 a.m. looking ahead to day two. And a review of day one is coming up on the radio and on all digital platforms from 7 p.m. this evening. We'll chat to you later. Good luck.